Hello friends, uh, this one is The Medici Murders by David Hewson. So this one is about Arnold Clover. He's an archivist living in Venice following the recent death of his wife when he's asked to assist the Carabinieri, I think that's how you pronounce it, in the case of the murder of British TV historian Marmaduke Godolphin, that's such a great name, who was killed in the same manner as Lorenzo de' Medici in 1548. Not only had Arnold Clover recently been hired by Godolphin to work on a discovery that would have revived the man's failing career, but he also went to the same university and knows all the players in the deceased man's milieu. As he goes back to the beginning to tell his story, we discover that Godolphin had a lot of enemies and a lot of secrets, and any of the people around him may have had reason to kill him. According to Goodreads, this is the first in a planned series about Arnold Clover, our archivist and man from Yorkshire, and we're in good hands. David Hewson is the author of the Nick Costa series set in Rome and the Peter Voss series set in Amsterdam. These are both mystery series with nice settings and interesting leading characters. To me, in style, this is very much commercial fiction, which works really well for this kind of story. The author clearly loves Venice and writes about the food and the locals and the streets there in a way that felt very real and rang true for me. His characters are slightly stock characters, but in a way that means they're quickly recognizable. They're not cookie cutter, but he writes in a very to the point way. It's what you would expect from a man who started out in journalism. And personally, I like it. It's genre fiction and it hits the spot. I feel transported to a beautiful city and into the story, but the book never lags. The structure of the book is that Clover is brought into the police station and told he has 24 hours to tell the story of what each of the other characters said to him, putting some tension in place by having a time limit and spooling the story back as he tells it. It reminds me a bit of a structure that Agatha Christie once used in The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. And that's all I'm going to say about that in case... Um, that might give away a little bit too much. Um, but conveniently, our main character had taken it upon himself to extend a personal invitation to each of the characters to show them something of Venice that they might like separately. Therefore, he had spent a little bit time with each one. This is the kind of thing that might be a bit unrealistic or convenient or too easy, but it works because of that commercial tone. The book invites us to just relax and enjoy a, a genre mystery in an old style, so it's not hyper real or gritty, but still believable enough and entertaining. Personally, I loved that our lead was an archivist, and the book has a slightly gothic or dark academia kind of atmosphere. There's winding alleys, um, historical figures, gondolas, masked players, old libraries, boxes of documents, stuffy colleagues, and jeweled knives. I loved all of the archive and library talk in this book. It's necessary exposition, but also like talk dusty shelves to me <laughs> you have my full attention i also think it's a nice detail that our lead character is squeamish in a time of popular true crime and gory murder stories this book gives us a man who is not desensitized to violence and i like that he's an analog man in a digital world but he's sympathetic and human there are a couple of missteps in this book uh, the Italian Capitano Valentina is overly beautiful and mixes her English metaphors and it just feels a little bit cartoonish, but not awful. Some of the dialogue is a little bit awkward. It's a bit unlikely that Arnold Clover would have been drawn into the case the way he is. So in the end, it feels a little bit contrived once you see the mystery solved. Um... I don't know. I, I feel like it's not an issue because of the kind of book it is. It's fast, fun, entertaining genre fiction. I would read more of this series. Something that I kind of hesitate to, to mention, but I'm noticing that in recent books coming out, they all seem to have a page in the second chapter that feels like a statement. And I can almost predict what page it will be on. It's the part where our main character lets us know that he respects women, we're given a token uh, gay or minority character, introduced to a male white boomer guy who's 
just so obviously going to be the bad guy. And a female character will say something long suffering and then the story will resume. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have an issue with the politics here, but the way it's like a box that needs to be ticked and like a statement made, it just feels a bit like oddly repetitive, awkwardly forced, and just could be much more easily and smoothly written into books as a whole. So, um, yeah, it's just, just one of those things. On the whole, I like this one, and if there are more in the series, I look forward to reading them. I liked the world of the story and the main character, and I sometimes really love a book that's just a straight, old-fashioned style mystery like this. So this one is for you if you like mysteries set in beautiful European cities, or Italy specifically, perhaps. It has a neat plot, some bookish vibes, and a great lead character. And thank you to PGC Books for the copy of this one for review. Thanks for watching. You can check out some of my other videos. I also have another channel and social, so you can find links below if you want more of that. And if you want to hang out again, remember to like and subscribe. And you can always leave a comment. Let me know what you thought or let me know what else you might want to see. Thank you.